It is not the devil. It is you. We cannot keep on this excuse of blaming every single thing that goes wrong in our lives on the devil. We have to take responsibility for ourselves because scripture says that we do have a sinful nature. It is not the devil, it is you. Man, a lot of people will be offended <laughs> if you tell them that, right? But maybe a lot of people need to hear this because I've heard this a lot recently, you know, just people blaming the devil for everything instead of taking responsibility for their own actions. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. If you sin against God, even if you're a Christian, remember Scripture says that He rebukes those whom He loves. If you sin against God, there will be consequences. For example, if you lie about something and get caught and then lose the trust of a family member, don't blame the devil for bad relationships in your family. Blame yourself if they don't trust you anymore. Galatians 6 verse 5 says, For each will have to bear his own load. Now, please understand me here. I'm not saying that the devil and his demons are not real. They are real. The devil is like a roaring lion looking around for someone to devour, and he gives orders to his demons to do the same. But we cannot keep on this excuse of bla blaming every single thing that goes wrong in our lives on the devil. We have to take responsibility for ourselves because Scripture says that we do have a sinful nature, and a lot of people don't like to accept that truth. Psalm 51 verse 5 says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And Galatians 5 verse 17 says, For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So we need to accept two things. Number one, we have this sinful nature in us. And number two, we cannot get rid of it in this temporary world. Nothing you or I can do will get rid of this sinful nature within us. We'll only be rid of it one day when we die, when we are with Christ. But for now, we have this sinful nature in us that wants to sin all the time, and we need to deal with it effectively. James 1 verse 14, But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. You cannot grow spiritually in Christ if you do not live according to the truth, if you do not accept it. If you accept it and understand truth and live according to it, then you can actually start to change things within yourself to grow with Christ. That's where you need to start to change the things in your life that are wrong. Like, for example, not taking responsibility for your own actions. Even if you think it is only a small matter, it will stand out like a, a dirt stain on a white t-shirt. Luke 16 verse 10, one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much.
You see, once we come to understand how sinful we are, the more we start to understand how holy God is and how righteous He is and that we don't deserve anything because there is a way to overcome sin and that way is through the cross for accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and receiving His Spirit that gives us the power that enables us to overcome sin. God gives that to us when we accept Him even though we do not deserve it. We do not deserve salvation. God doesn't need us, but He wanted to create us. He loves us. He wanted to give us life and He worked the redemption plan, sending His own Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins because only He could. You see, you cannot work your own salvation because even the most righteous deeds you have, they are like filthy rags to God who is holy. That's why Jesus Christ had to come, who is perfect, who had no sin in Him, to die for our sins on the cross. So it is a gift. He didn't need to give it to us. He could have said, well, I don't care about you. But He loves us. So not only do we receive the gift of eternal salvation when we trust in Him as our Lord and Savior, but He also gave us the Spirit, the Helper, while we are here on earth to overcome sin. Galatians 5 verse 16, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And 1 John 5 verse 4 says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. You see, we have already received victory with Christ over this sinful world if we live through the Spirit. A lot of young Christians struggle with this. They don't understand how they can overcome sin and also sometimes hear from God. But, you know, Scripture says that the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting to the vision between soul and spirit, your soul with your emotions, your own intellect, your own will. That's you and your new spirit. But when you become a reborn Christian, you're a spiritual baby. So you need to work to read the Word of God more and more so that it cuts through in between the soul and the spirit so you can start to discern between the two. And it is the spirit where you connect with God, where He talks to you and you talk to Him. And you can only worship God in spirit and in truth. Now, if you still struggle with sinful thoughts and sin in your daily life, then please watch this video here. I'll see you there. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And never forget, life is short. So please do not waste yours. Cheers, guys.